Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this evening's presentation on the Southeast Greenway presented by Sean Breen of Maliki Walsh and Partners. My name is Fanula Callery and I'm a member of the Engineers Ireland Southeast Regional Committee. On behalf of the Southeast Region and the Southeast Chair, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar as part of the Sustainability Grand Tour and the Southeast Region's webinar series. The Sustainability Grand Tour is an opportunity to explore the role of engineers in developing more sustainable cities and communities. We've had seminars taking place since January and these continue into April and May with speakers from Ireland and internationally. These are available to watch back on YouTube, so it's well worth it if you have a bit of time. The series has been a great success so far, and tonight we have over 300 people registered. The webinar series has allowed Engineers Ireland to bring great content to a wide audience and has opened up events like this to participants all across the country. Tonight's presentation is on the Southeast Greenway, which is a joint initiative of Wexford County Council, Kilkenny County Council, and Waterford and City County Council, supported by the local partnership organisations. The completed project will be a great resource for the local community and the local economy. As a Wexford native, I for one am very looking forward to cycling the finished product. In a moment, I'll pass you over to Sean Breen of Maliki Walsh and Partners to deliver this presentation, which will take about 40 minutes. Following the presentation, you can, we'll take questions for about 15 minutes or so and aim to finish up at about eight o'clock. You can use the chat box at the bottom of your Zoom screen to submit questions. Sean works for Maliki Walsh and Partners He's a chartered engineer with over 15 years experience delivering civil and structural projects in Ireland and in the UK. Sean is also a member of the Project Management Institute and a certified project management professional. I'd like to thank him sincerely for giving up his time this evening to work on the project and to give us this presentation. Over to you, Sean. Thanks, Fanon. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, and I'd just like to thank the Southeast Region of Engineers Ireland just for giving me the opportunity to um, speak to you tonight. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just talk about the Southeast Greenway, um, and, and some of you I'm sure will be familiar with the project, and, and those of you who aren't, um, hopefully will be um, by the time I've I've finished this talk. Um, so the agenda tonight, I suppose, just as a, a bit of an introduction, just about me, and, and Vanilla has graciously kind of done half of that for me, so that that'll help me out. Um, just a little bit about the national strategy, just around greenways, um, and how just the the overall national picture in relation to greenways and and what we um we're hoping to do i suppose as a, as a nation and, and broadly speaking um just in connection with other with our routes as well um a little bit just about the kind of visitor experience and just biodiversity and just how that kind of is a, is a factor in terms of um your design of greenways and um and it's an important ultimately the greenway is all about the benefits that it brings once it's concluded uh, and those are benefits both to the to the users of the greenway and and the communities in which uh, the greenways run through. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the rail history, um, which is the the Dublin Wicklow and Wexford um, railway. The SEG route itself, uh, and just a little bit of an overview, just of the features uh, and the kind of attractions on the route um, that you'd hopefully see once you um, once it opens. And uh, construction works, some of the construction works that have conducted to date uh, and that have been completed in advance of, of the, the main contract works and um, some of the proposed works that, that are going to be uh, conducted as part of this project. And I'm just going to give you a whistle stop tour around the design and the elements of that. And um, a little bit just about the program and where we are and, and the, the kind of the cost and fundings and, and there's a QA um, basis behind that. And um, broadly speaking, the, the talk will be more kind of just about the high level just of greenways and and this this greenway in particular, um, rather than kind of focusing on the, the technical uh, aspects because I'm, I'm just conscious there's a broad base of, um, of, of an audience tonight. So um, about me. Um, Fanula has already uh, introduced me there, thankfully. Um, as she said, I'm 15 years um, postgraduate now from um, Trinity College originally, uh, and I'm a chartered engineer with Engineers Ireland and uh, a member of the Project Management uh, Institute. Um, Maliki Walsh um, is the company that I work for. We were founded in uh, 1967, and um, we've got 150 uh, staff across um, a number of offices. Um, and amongst our other sectors in which we work in, uh, we have extensive experience in pedestrian and uh, cycleway design, um, including the planning and management of, of those. So the, the national strategy. So yeah, the national greenway strategy. Um, so the strategy for the future development of national and regional greenways 
um, from the Department of Transport uh, is, is kind of the main uh, document for this. Um, I suppose they have a, a statement within that document, which I think is, is a good one just to kind of start off with. Um, there's an excellent opportunity now to develop new greenways in a way that can transform more rural areas around the country, provide a wonderful experience for visitors and locals and contribute to the health of the nation. Um, and I think that's a good uh, point to start from, uh, just in relation to uh, greenways themselves and, and what they, they entail. And they're key economic contributors to rural communities to increase tourism, and they benefit the health and well-being of local communities. And the key objectives of those is to increase the number and the geographical spread of greenways, the scale and quantity around the country for the next 10 years, with a consequent significant increase in the number of people using greenways. Um, so, so this is the, the national plan, and um, it's, it's an important one, and I think it's one that in the corner climate um, is, 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 is one that's important for us to support. So just the objectives on the strategy itself, um, as I said, it's a strategic greenway network, um, both national and regional. Um, we kind of generally segregated and off-line uh, routes so that, so they're, that don't have vehicle traffic uh, into mixing with them except for, for conjunctions, um, but no vehicles will be permitted to, to access the, the greenway elements other than maintenance vehicles and, and emergency services, and um, that they're of a scale that's, a, that's appropriate to drive tourism and to support the communities in which they run, and that they provide business development opportunities, and the, such as the Greenway uh, at Waterford there, the Waterford Greenway is, is a perfect example of um, the success that that can bring to a region, and that it's developed in line with the relevant uh, stakeholders to an agreed code of practice. And, TAI are currently developing uh, a code of practice in relation to that, and, and it's something that, that we'll um, be, be eagerly waiting, and um, because it, it is something that is, is overdue. So the strategy itself, and they, they talk about the five S's, um, and that's kind of scenic, sustainable, strategic, segregated shared use, and to see and do. And just in relation to the Southeast Greenway, um, we have excellent views of the Barrow and the Rosa Cheryl Kennedy Bridge, um, and some elements that, that I'll kind of touch upon as we, as we go on. Um, I particularly really like the contrast between some of the cut sections in, in rural Kilkenny um, that when they open it then into an embankment that's maybe 10 or 15 metres above the countryside. Um, just that contrast is, um, is lovely. And it's a feature I think that is, is kind of unique to the screenway that, that will, um, will be a kind of a hidden gem. Uh, sustainable, uh, the attractive alternative to, to commuters, um, New Ross Town and Waterford City uh, are obviously key urban areas and this will provide uh, opportunities for commuters and, and school children alike to, to use this in, in lieu of other transport uh, modes. Um, strategic, it, it obviously links um, New Ross and Waterford City but there's also a future regional greenway network um, and I'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, the segregated shared use, like this particular greenway has the benefit of, of a, a largely intact uh, corridor that, that runs from, from tip to tip. Uh, and that's a great asset for, for the Southeast Greenway um, as it, it just provides uh, a strong basis to, to define the route and uh, allows us to, to progress it. Um, and then see and do, uh, we'll talk a little bit just about New Ross and Waterford and just some of the visitor attractions that are there um, and, and the kind of storytelling behind that. So on the storytelling, uh, Fulcher Ireland um, have a, a guidance just around visitor attractions and, and in particular, what makes a great visitor experience. Um, so they, they, the general uh, principles behind that is, is the storytelling. Um, so it's critical that the story behind um, your attraction is, is interesting, unique and, and memorable. Um, and, and anything that you have that's unique to that, uh, bringing that to the forefront. So in relation to the Southeast Greenway, we obviously have New Ross, which has a, a Norman town basis, um, and we're going to Waterford, which has a, a Viking um, history. Um, so that, that's going to be something that can, can add uh, a story to the route as well. Uh, in conjunction with the rail history itself. Um, also the agricultural story uh, in relation to the Greenway and its rail, and um, this rail has served the, the, the region for uh, over 120 years. 
uh, and in that time it's it's been central to the communities that it has served um, in recent years in the 90s it was, it was transporting mostly fertilizer and, and and before that there was a, a sugar beet industry that was um, heavily involved in, in the rail units around here so and um, the agricultural in uh, areas in Kilkenny um, which the, the majority of this route runs through and um, they would have had a, a strong interface with this rail over the years and, and a strong connection to it so that history is something I think that we're eager to try and bring uh, in and expose also to um, to the users of the Greenway and um, just so they can get a flavour for the, the real agricultural um, heritage that's there that's connected with this route. Um, the presentation uh, is is key so uh, you know if you can have the best story in the world but you, you need to be able to tell it to people and part of that is the utilising of wayfinding and signage uh, and, and different installations and and there's a there's a whole package of work uh, involved in in how we do that and and um, that'll be something that will in time change also and um, so it's it has the benefit that this, it can be updated and it can be changed to to suit maybe new trends and uh, new needs by by people who use the route and then access amenities and staff um i suppose the, the access and amenities access is, is critical to any infrastructure like this um, and that's primarily delivered by the trailheads, the, the car parks, the amenities such as toilets and um, supporting businesses such as cafes and, and the local regions and towns nearby. Um, they're key to it. And then, and then staff really is just more about just the, the kind of just the maintenance and the upkeep of, of this and, and just making sure that it, it, it stays um, the attraction that we want it to be. So the animation of the route, um, I mentioned there, just kind of about the different um, historical heritage of the line, um, and just using kind of storyboards to animate that. Um, the biodiversity is is one thing, and it links in obviously to our sustainability aspect, um, in that there's a just in relation to national pollinator plan and and integrating just the planting and the treatment of uh, the the flora and fauna around you and um, through the greenway, um, and just using that to support uh, again another national. Uh, strategic goal in, in relation to, um, to to climate change and, and other elements that we were trying to support with, with these type of initiatives. Um, and just the last point I think is is, is an important one um, and then COVID obviously has has impacted us in this way but just engagement with local communities and um, we've, we've discovered I suppose just in as part of that engagement and um, there's some fantastic stories about the, the route and the history of the route and just personal experience of whether they're working on the line or family members that worked on the line. Um, and we've seen some fantastic photographs um, of, of the rail over that period at key events uh, over the, the decades. And there's there's a piece at the moment that we're, we're trying to progress there to try and um, maximize that and, and photographs and, and stories that people have. So um, that's a, a work in progress, but I think it's something that is, again, is crucial to, to telling the story of, of this, this rail corridor. So the, the biodiversity that I just mentioned, um, the railway land is, is unique in that sense that it's, uh, it creates a, a green network that can link between cities and towns. Um, and you know, flowering hedgerows really is one of the main things in relation to the greenway, um, such as willow and white thorn and black thorns, um, and, and they provide uh, huge sustenance for, for the bees um, at different stages in the year. Um, so kind of key principles for us really is just that minimizing of, of loss of habitats um, and having patches of wildflowers, flowering hedgerows uh, and and, even, and places for nesting sites as well. So we've got a lot of old stone walls in relation to bridges and um, so they'll all be retained and the, the base of embankments as well, trying to keep them uh, open just that they provide nesting sites also. So um, there's a number of factors there that, that's supported by the, the National Biodiversity Data Series and, and that's something that we, we're going to try and, um, try and include. So the, the history of the rail itself, um, this is just a kind of a quick map just around uh, the route itself. So Waterford Town, Waterford City is just here. This is kind of the North Quay. Um, you can see the black line there, it runs up to New Ross and then would have continued on then um, onto Ennis Forty and, and ultimately up to Dublin. Um, within the town of New Ross, uh, Ross Birkin was the, kind of was the main rail yard uh, for, for that line and that yard is, is going to ultimately be one of our main trailheads that will support the, the Greenway. Um, the rail itself, it opened in 1887 and in 1904 uh, they extended that line from New Ross to, to Waterford. 
Um, the passenger services then on the McMahon Junction, that's the, the Ross Clare line, um, that ceased in, in 1963. But the section from Waterford to New Ross had remained in use um, up to the mid 90s. Uh, and like I said, there was, there, was, there was a port in New Ross here. So there was cement and fertilizer traffic primarily uh, during that time. Uh, this is a, an old picture of uh, Ross Birkin itself, just in its heyday, and you can kind of see the, the, the various different um, platforms and um, and shunt areas that they have within the within the complex. It's quite a large a large site, um, and the the lower picture is is just in the mid nineties, early nineties, um, likely fertilizer being being moved out of the the depot. Um, Glenmore, kind of around Aylestone, it was the only intermediate station between uh, New Ross and uh, Waterford. And unfortunately, none of the, the, the platform structures um, remain, um, but the platforms themselves generally um, do. So, so that's, um, that's something that we will want to try and emphasize those platforms where they're present. And um, again, that'll come into telling the story and, and just mentioning about some of these stations and, and hopefully the history that these stations have and their connection to the, the local communities. So this is just a, an image of, or an OSI map of Waterford itself. Um, on the North Quay here, you can just see this as anybody who's been in Waterford, the main train station is just up here. Um, so then if you head to the east, um, you'll just see kind of ferry banks here and ferry bank, and th this is Abbey Road, and, th and that's basically where our Greenway starts from. Uh, there's quite an ambitious, uh, project that uh, Waterford uh, City Council have um, embarked upon um, that I'm sure some of you may be aware of called the North Quay um, project and that involves um, a, a huge redevelopment of the North Quay to, into a mixed-use commercial district. There's uh, a, a new interchange, transport interchange in the Ferrybank area here uh, and there's a new bridge that ultimately would, would carry the existing Waterford um, Greenway and link it on to and the southeast uh, greenway. Some of the kind of heritage features, just that um, as part of that rail that we mentioned, um, wrought iron gates are, are in every existing agricultural crossing on the route, and, and these are very common around the country. And um, they're fantastic gates, and um, they're all wrought iron. You can see these gates are they're well over 100 years old, um, and and largely in in good condition, um, and it's. It's a testament to the to their construction and, and partly also to the material, which is is more uh, resistant to, to corrosion. And these clamps are, are some of the original rail clamps, and, and they in themselves tell a bit of a history of the rail. And you might just be able to make out a just on the bottom that says 1908. And um, all the clamps are are dated, and and as you go along, you can kind of see the history of them and some areas that have been replaced. And then signal infrastructure, such as this on the right, and um, these are common also. So the, the route itself, um, as mentioned, the, the extent of the route is from New Ross to Waterford City. Um, the, the majority of the route is in through, is through Kilkenny. Um, there, there's about maybe about 120 metres or so um, in Waterford itself before we, you, you move into the Kilkenny uh, district. And it, that runs all the way up to the outskirts of, of New Ross. Um, so the overall length of the route is, is about 24 kilometres. And there's, there's two surfacing or two types within the, the route. There's what we're, we term the, the rural element, which is around New Ross and around Waterford and um, Abbeylands and Ferrybanks. And they support those bigger urban areas that will have a demand for, for commuting and, and more high volume use. With the main rural section then through Kilkenny, um, a three meter wide section, uh, as opposed to the five meter wide section that the, the urban uh, sections are. Um, on the features, uh, one of the, the kind of the, the, some of the highlight features along the route and just what can, you can be expect to see, uh, Mount Elliot Tunnel, uh, just outside New Ross on the other side of the barrel. Uh, this is an existing rail tunnel, it's 650 um, meters long, and um, it's it's curved, which which makes it quite interesting as well. A lot of the tunnels that are on other greenways are straight through. And you can obviously, as you enter, you can see the, the portal at the other end. So you can, you can literally see the light at the other end of the tunnel. Uh, in this case, you can't. Uh, when you enter the tunnel, once you go in about 100 metres, um, you, you're in total darkness. Um, so it's, it's a very different experience. Um, and it's something that we're, we're working closely with at the moment just to try and maximise that 
and and to to again to, to just really tell a story there and try and uh, use it as a feature. The red bridge itself. Um, this is a, 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 a again a protected structure and a feature of of New Ross and one that many would be familiar with. Um, it's it's a key key aspect too to the route, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about both of them. Um, now, so the as I mentioned, the Mount Elliot uh, is a key thing. This is the the south bore as you as you come in, and and that's the north side that that we looked at. And the number of different options that we're we're looking at within the tunnel itself, um, there's there's various audio visual. Uh, options that we're we're exploring and um, within the tunnel at the moment and um, the both just in terms of the permanent installation that, that as anybody going through at any time will will see but also just to have that flexibility for some feature um audio visuals and, and they could be on special events such as say halloween or easter or um, any particular event that we wanted to leave that you could actually have a, a, a bespoke um audio visual experience within them uh, lighting and security is obviously one of the key things um, the lighting will will have a base lighting, and anybody who's been on the Waterford line will will know uh, the kind of lighting that that the tunnel has. But that will also be supplemented uh, in areas then to to pick out features and to try and highlight uh, elements. There there's obviously some sensitivities around um, bats and, and other elements. This tunnel doesn't have any um, any roosting sites and has been surveyed, um, but still we there there will be a sensitivity then uh, within that that space. Um, security is a key option and a key aspect to this and, and we are looking at the different options there in terms of CCPD and another coverage just to ensure that it is a, um, a safe space and that, that people feel comfortable in it, particularly given, as I mentioned, its length and the fact that it's covered so you, you can't see uh, all the way through. Um, and, and this is just kind of a, an image just of some of the, the, audio, the lighting and visual um, elements that can be, uh, can be done in this space. Um, there's a number of different things, both the lighting and even just on the pavement, there is uh, a luminescent uh, aggregate that can be used um, to, to add features to the, to the, the, heart, the black top itself. Um, we're looking at that as well in, in relation to the tunnel and the bridge. The, the tunnel, we're, we're just trying to see if um, in terms of its uh, lighting, uh, whether it can actually be charged enough with the, um, the ambient lighting that will be within the tunnel. And it's certainly something with the red bridge. Is, um, is a possible opportunity where we can use this. Um, and this is just a picture from uh, Valley Vale Tunnel in, in Waterford Greenway. So it's just gonna give you an indication of, of what the kind of tunnel experience is like. Um, the tunnel in Mount Elliot is different in that it, it has intermittent brick arch and stone arch elements. They're not continuous such as, as this tunnel. So you have a portal of, of maybe 25 meters or so. And then it goes out into a heavy stone cut that was blasted uh, out originally. Um, and, and these actually are really interesting because they provide a lot of kind of dynamic uh, change to the environment within the space. And, and we're looking at again, just to kind of to, to use lighting sensitivity there to, to just highlight some of these spaces. Some elements you, you go from maybe a, a, a five, six meter soffit height up to a, a 10 or 12 meter height in some places um, where it's um, obviously when they've blasted it, they've had a larger section that's that's moved. So it's it's a it's an interesting one that we think we'll um, we'll, we'll be able to do um, do a lot with the bridge. Um, so it's 177 meters long. And it's got six raw iron spans, um, and there's a central pivot section that you can just going to see there that would have allowed um, ship traffic through uh, in in the past. Um, it's in quite good condition. Um, and again, it's a testament to the wrought iron um, basis and, and it's, it's kind of natural resistance uh, to, um, to rust. Um, this is just a shot through one of the, um, the spans uh, and this is kind of a typical span uh, that, that is there for five of the six spans. Uh, the central span is, is different in that this was the span that opened and you can see it's much lighter and has two primary beams. Um, the, the approach to the, to the bridge itself is, is effectively a new deck uh, that will be laid across and, and new barriers with lighting uh, through there. And so and, and the key for us really is that this is a it's a protected structure. We want to work quite sensitively with the bridge. And so the idea is to try and, and put something in that, that from a distance you, you can't really um, discern uh, too easily. So that it'll, it'll hopefully work um, in, in harmony with the existing structure. New Ross Town um, obviously has a lot of features and a lot of um, attractions in its own right. Um, the Dunbrody 
uh, fanmanship there, uh, as well as just some some of the features that we have within the town. And um, regional kind of just the links to to towns is, is something, and, and to the local communities offline is, is is something that we're we're obviously important. And um, we want to try and get people as well as they come through in the Greenway to to look at New Ross say as a as a destination and and have that. Um, broader benefit in terms of the region from from the Greenway uh, in terms of tourism and um, and just future potential for business growth. And um, so on Hannerhans Bridge uh, is is potentially uh, uh, we're looking at different options then in the future for to to link that across and just to encourage people to come um, come over. And um, there's a very nice riverside walk in in the town at the moment that was that was constructed recently by by um, Wexford County Council. Yeah, and and these are the kind of features that. Um, we want to try and tie in and just make it kind of a more holistic experience. Um, the Rawls Kennedy, uh, Fitzgerald Kennedy Bridge, uh, which is the new kind of bypass for the N25. Um, I'm sure a lot of people who familiar with this have got a lot of coverage on the news. And um, it's it's in a quite beautiful area in Kilkenny, just as you as you come up um, from Kerry Clooney. And it, it runs through the SAC there. And we, it's there's some really nice parts of the Greenway where we think we'll have opportunities for rest areas that you can um, you can stop and, and maybe have a picnic or, or just kind of take a break and and this picture here will basically be the view that you'll have of, of the barrow and, and the bridge so it's um, it's a spectacular feature and I think it'll, it'll definitely um, gain a lot of uh, a lot of traction and um, the future connections um, and I kind of talk about that in a future slide but this is the the barrow bridge um, this is just a render of that North Key development that I mentioned earlier. And um, so you can see it's, it's, it's obviously substantial. And, and again, it will bring a, a, a huge driver to, to the Greenways. Um, and this is just the, um, the Waterford Greenway itself. And um, so those linkages that I mentioned, uh, Ross there to Waterford, um, which is this section here. Um, that's there's one option that's that's been uh, looked at at present, um, and that will take you all the way out to the Europort, and and that ultimately then provides a connection with the Eurovelo networks, um, and there's a huge cycling um, community um, and network within Europe that that we can then uh, link in and become part of, and then to the south end the the obviously the existing Waterford Greenway, which is a, a very successful greenway um, at present, and uh, with that north. Uh, key development that would, would link through. So the, the root surface, and this was the, the kind of key objective, really is just the smooth even surface and, and just to try and um, encourage use. We've two kind of primary, primarily two different types of surfaces on the route. The, the urban sections that I mentioned around New Ross and, and Waterford um, will be a macadam basis, and, and that's on the basis of their high volume. Um, so that, that's the five meter sections. In the rural area, we have a, a double surface dressing. Um, so it's kind of a 2-6 chipping and a 10-14 chipping um, in, in two layers. And, and again, that's just the, the kind of the, the lower volume and just the balance of, um, of, of benefits there. The construction works um, where we are to date. Um, so there's there's been a number of advanced contracts on the project. Um, we've had some rec from some vegetation clearances and a number of surveys. Um, but the first real um, kind of works as such uh, in relation to the existing corridor was the rail lifting contract and that commenced around August um, last year. Um, there's three local authorities involved as I mentioned and, and they have a section 85 uh, agreement which uh, allows Wexford County Council to just to take the lead uh, in, in relation to um, just the administration of, of the project. Um, but we can see here this, this was a picture that was taken just with um, the the, at the opening of it in, in Ross Birkin itself. Um, and there's, there's been huge involvement um, and I, I, I'd like to thank the, the different councils uh, at all levels um, for, the, for the support and the openness and, and everybody's really committed to, to having a successful project. And, and the, the local councillors and the municipal districts, um, they have been a great asset as well. Um, they, they're generally in the few meetings and presentations that I've had with them. Um, it's it's all about trying to uh, increase the benefits that this can bring to the local area. So it's um, it, there's been fantastic engagement from the community um, and from the um, the public and representatives and local authorities alike. And um, so we've we've two bridge decks that have been replaced already, and um, just as part of the clearance work. And um, these bridges were were decks that had been removed and um, that were were impassable and needed to be replaced in order to facilitate the the rail lift. 
so they were they were conducted in advance. Um, so so that's just a picture of, of one of the precast elements being dropped in. Um, this is Ross Birkin Station as it is today. Um, so this is the, the main route you can see in the picture um, where the Greenway will run through. You can just see the platform uh, down on your left and, and your Ross will be in the distance uh, on your left hand side. Um, the, this compound area now ultimately will become the, the car park in the main trailhead uh, and that will have facilities such as toilets and um, uh, other public amenities. So it's um, it, it'll be a, a great asset. The N25 overbridge, so just on the approach to the Rose Kennedy Bridge, there's a new rail overbridge that was put in to replace um, the, the Greenway um, section that was removed to facilitate that bridge works um, and facilitate the road upgrade. So this is this was completed by BAM and, and TAI as part of that project. And, and we will be uh, bringing the Greenway through this, so we'll have new surfacing and, and fencing through the the existing bridge that's that's present, so it'll be converted for greenway use then. Um, the proposed works itself, now uh, and just kind of a, an overview just of, of the type of, of works that are there. Um, so we've got um, six culverts that, that kind of allow safe access, daily access for large herds um, on the greenway, uh, and these allow the, the greenway basically to run underneath the, the current agricultural use um, that's, that's present in those, those areas. Um, we have a number of, of road crossings, both over public roads and private roads, uh, and, and these are conducted in line with the TIA specification, the um, rural uh, cycle ride design offline. And um, most of our routes, are, they're all low volume, so that they all have less than, than 12,000 um, AADP. So um, they're generally give way junctions uh, throughout. Uh, the old N25 uh, routes at uh, New Ross um, just because of the width of the road um, and the nature of, of the, the junction itself, we have signal crossings just at those, but um, that's that's largely um, largely the, the, the difference, but most of them will be just a give way to, um, to traffic on the roadway. Um, they'll have a chicane uh, basis through, and this is an image just from, from Waterford's Greenway, and it kind of gives you an indication just of what that kind of typical private road junction might be like. Um, they've recreated the gates that we, we saw earlier and, and I think it worked quite successfully. And it also allows quite broad uh, access. One of the big uh, issues just on, on greenways in some areas is just there's obviously a balance between hindering uh, unauthorised motorised vehicle access um, but also um, allowing the, the kind of use for cyclists um, and the ver various different modes of cyclists, so uh, cyclists with trailers and, and larger bikes with panniers, uh, these kind of things, they, they find it very difficult to get through kissing gates and, and tighter chicane type arrangements. So that's something that um, it, it we want to avoid here. Um, and these gates will be openable, which will allow access then for maintenance vehicles, um, but, but will avoid that restriction to, um, to, to vehicles. Um, most of the just the agricultural interfaces with the with the landowners and um, they're, they're gated crossings typically uh, and these are, are kind of a gated crossing that allows a safe crossing for for animals and, and machinery and um, so that they can take take ownership effectively of that space and stop um, the greenway and allow uh, their agricultural use to, to continue through in, in a safe manner and um, this is a kind of a picture just of a typical arrangement that's on, on Waterford and, and it's one that's worked quite successfully uh, and, and it'll be one that we will hope to replicate. Um, and, and I would say with the with the landowners, um, again, this is these are one of the key elements to this. Uh, ultimately, there there needs to be um, just a an understanding too that these these greenways run through um, agricultural land that and adjacent to agricultural land that, that are, are are the livelihoods of, of the local communities and. And there's a sensitivity there too that, that we need to understand that and we need to work with them. And uh, again, I'd, I'd kind of would like to thank a lot of the landowners that they've we've had great support um, in generally with, with all the people that we've we've discussed and um, again some some great ideas in terms of how how all this interfaces. Um, we have a number of existing rail bridges. Uh, most of those rail bridges are intact and and their decks are in good condition. Uh, and it's largely parapet works, uh, just the, the parapets that are on those bridges obviously were, were intent for a, a train coming through there and, and maybe an occasional maintenance worker walking beside it. 
uh, they wouldn't have envisaged uh, what is required for a modern cycleway now. So um, they largely need to be uh, increased to allow that. Um, some bridges we need to replace. And, and some bridges such as this, such as um, just to, to north of New Ross in, in Mount Elliot Lane, um, the existing bridge has, has been removed here and, and the tunnel is just on, on the other side of this here. So we, we need to install a new bridge there. And um, as you can see with its detail, it's um, it, it's a very high bridge and, and that's to take account of just the existing agricultural use uh, on that lane to allow um, kind of the, the maximum uh, TII uh, permitted vehicles to be able to, to move through there um, without hindering that agricultural use. Uh, and that's just a picture just of one of the, the existing crossings um, and just how it's kind of um, it's set into the, the landscape. Uh, the trailheads themselves and the car parks and those access points that I mentioned, there's, there's four car parks to be constructed um, as part of this um, project. And then there are Ferry Bank, Glenmore, uh, Osbirkin and Mount Elliot. Um, the Ferry Bank and Osbirkin are the two main trailheads and, and they're located at, at either end. Uh, Mount Elliot is just to the north of the tunnel on the other end, uh, and that's the uh, kind of a supporting uh, car park, as is Glenmore, which is um, in the kind of the middle of the route, and uh, around kind of 15 kilometres uh, from from Waterford. Uh, this picture here is the is the Glenmore one, so it's just going to give you a, a typical idea of, of the type of facility of these intermediate car parks. Um, the Ross Burton car park is mentioned, which is just to remind you that's, that was the the original rail yard. Um, it's, it'll be a fairly substantial car park of 150 spaces. Uh, it'll have provisions for coaches, um, bicycle stands, and, and VAC positions, uh, as well as some public amenities. So we're looking at various different options, uh, and again, to support that story um, that we mentioned earlier on, um, we're looking at just in terms of the toilet facilities in our teams and, and whether we can uh, use a design that um, will will reference those 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 old structures and those historic structures. Um, so there's a lot of potential again in, in, in this area, and it's something that we want to to try and have that holistic connection uh, with the greenway and its and the story that we're we're telling. And um, there'll obviously public public lighting and and other elements of this as well that will um, that will support that. Um, at Ferrybank, um, there's been kind of extensive public engagement just around. Um, the uh, the provision of a car park at this locality and and again it's to try and balance the um, the benefits of the greenway um, and um, the, the the support of the communities in, in terms of the use that, that they want to have um, and that we would, would like to encourage um, but also just the, their concerns and issues that are um, that are present there just to try and um, address them so we we've, we've had a, a very intensive engagement with them and um, it's been it's been a very proactive process. Um, this is just a kind of an initial uh, drawing at the moment that, that's still ongoing, um, but this is kind of just generally roughly um, where, we're, where we're at with that at the moment. Um, so kind of program uh, and kind of cost related elements. Um, so the program, uh, as I said, kind of the, the works that kind of started tendering, um, there's a phased uh, lot approach. And so we've, we've tendered um, three lots uh, to date. Uh, and we're just waiting for for the COVID restrictions to to lift for for them to commence. Um, we obviously the rail lifting contract that I've discussed has, has already gone ahead, and um, we're hoping to kind of commence the the construction in earnest in, in May. And uh, the completed greenway, uh, we're looking at kind of quarter one, uh, 2023 uh, for for that. So just in costways, um, and some of the, the news we've, we've seen that there's been um, uh, an increase in the funding uh, models for for elements such as Greenway like ourselves, um, and the department is is largely funding um, the the project now, um, just with a small introduction from the from the local authorities involved. Um, this is just to kind of just in terms of of where you can get kind of further information, and and as the project uh, continues. Um, there's a website, um, which is the southeastgreenway.net, and uh, anybody who's been on the Waterford Greenway and has, would have been familiar with a map uh, like this, and it's one that um, is, is trying to be standard, so standardised across all the greenways. Um, so this is just kind of a, a, a working uh, muck above of that, and, and just to highlight attractions and um, just to try and um, try and guide people in terms of where they might want to go and, and how they want to plan their route. Um, so, so that link is, is a good one. It, it also has uh, project updates, so it'll, it'll give you project updates and, and news associated with, with its progress. 
and then ultimately it will be the main portal then for for planning your visit um, to the green light so um so yeah um thank you very much i know that was kind of a very uh whistle stop tour over this and um, there's as, as you can kind of wear the green waves have a, a lot of elements and a lot of them you could probably do a, a full talk on on any one of the elements that were were discussed um, and perhaps in, in the future that um, if, if there's a demand for we might we may just do that but um that's that's the presentation from me and, uh, and i think it'd be great if we could do a, a site visit at the end of the project and uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. Trip and have a run through see the finished product the bridges the the surfacing um and just all the different aspects it's it's going to be a very very interesting project and brilliant for the area um sean thanks a million um for the presentation it was great um I suppose we could have talked for probably another hour um but we could probably wrap it up there now yeah it's it's a great project and and yeah we're we're looking forward to um seeing the um the final uh the final project and, and hopefully be it a, a non-covid situation where everybody can come and enjoy it from all oh, parts yeah yeah Imagine, imagine, wouldn't that be nice? Um, well, I suppose that's kind of brings us to the end. Um, I want to thank everyone for their attendance today and all the questions. We have plenty of questions, so thanks very much for that. Um, my thanks, especially to Sean and also to my colleagues in Wexford County Council who are working on the project and who roped Sean into uh, giving this this presentation this evening. So uh, that's much appreciated. Um, and special thanks to Sinead Quinn Phillips, of course, for organising the event tonight and for the seamless setup. Um, just want to promote the next um, event. The next in the Grand Tour is next Wednesday evening on 7th of April and will be hosted by the Northeast region. Um, and there's weekly events after that as well. So on the 14th, uh, the 21st, the 28th and up to the 5th. Uh, the Southeast region also has an upcoming event um, on the 21st of April and it's delivered by the LGMA Housing Delivery Coordination Office. Uh, and that'll be on the best practice how housing delivery channels and methods. So um, the webinar series is great. It just gives access to uh, a lot of people to events that they otherwise wouldn't uh, get to. So it's it's brilliant. Um, and you can register now for the, the Grand Tour events. So thanks very much for your attendance and um, see you again soon. <laughs>